So it's been a long time since my last video uh, that I've uploaded and I felt it was a good time now to present another video uh, that is a case of stem cell deficiency with a cataract. Now this case is really a challenging case to carry out when you're not focusing too much on the stem cell deficiency but you're trying to manage a cataract and then plan for a stem cell transplant later on. So in this case uh, you could see the uh, conjunctivalization of the cornea from previous pathology and what I'm doing initially is to just keep the corneal surface quite dry and initially taking the epithelial layer off on top and then dealing with a superficial keratectomy. As you could see from the video so far I don't use anything sharp on the surface of the eye. I use um, spears to try and take the epithelium off without too much trauma and then I'm using a hydrodissection cannula uh, to try and find a plane where I could lift up the um, superficial um, scarring that's on the corneal surface. Now here you can see I'm trying to pick away and find a plane and initially it looks like it's not going to be effective but then you find a plane and you could see a bit more of the cornea. So when you compare this view now to the one that you had in the beginning there's a big difference and this will really help with uh, carrying out cataract surgery in these complex situations. Now here I'm just trying to um, take away the uh, the bleeding that's that's happening. Uh, you'll get constant oozing, so you can use adrenaline drops to uh, calm the oozing down. But ultimately, with time, this bleeding will will stop itself. So here I'm trying to find the plane again and lift the uh, corneal tissue, the corneal scarring away. I'm trying very carefully not to find a new plane which will go deeper because this this level looks quite adequate um, and it wouldn't cause any significant stromal scarring. Um, there may be areas like you see there where the Bowman's layer may be compromised so you just have to be careful about the level and the plane that you go down. You get a feel of how scarred the cornea is based on how much of a plane you get and whether there's any deeper scarring involved. You don't want to start digging too deep with your hydrosection cannula. Now beyond this once you get the plane on the cornea then you need to think about doing a pyritomy and rather than doing a separate pyritomy I just try and push the conjunctival tissue as this is all one um, plane uh, beyond the limbus away from the limbus so you can see me here with a pair of tying forceps just pulling the um, tissue away and it comes off quite nicely so this is all scar tissue and you're taking the conjunctiva off beyond that so the fundamental aspect of limbal stem cell deficiencies, you get corneal uh, conjunctivalization and you basically want to take this tissue as far away from the limbal area as possible. Now here I'm just um, drying the uh, limbal area and just checking there's no residual scarring. You want to try and take as much scarring away uh, even from the limbal area as possible in preparation for cataract surgery and then later on for amnion uh, transplantation. See so here I'm putting some more drops of adrenaline uh, on the surface and just assessing the view that I have. So when you compare this view now to the view before, it's a big, big difference and it'll get even better later when we use uh, ocular surface uh, protection. So here I'm just doing a paracentesis on both sides, as I often use by manual in these instances. This patient has a very dense white cataract and it could be very unpredictable, especially in this kind of pathology. So you want to use all tools that you have available to you to try and help the situation. So here I'm using Vision Blue. I'm just trying to get a feel for the behavior of the eye, uh, whether it's, uh, it's a shallow AC or whether there's posterior pressure. You could always look at um, ways to relieve any posterior pressure that might be happening. And then I'm using Viscoat to protect the corneal undersurface and then I'm using a soft shell technique now going in with my uh, viscoelastic, my cohesive viscoelastic um, just above the anterior capsule. Now here I'm doing a three step incision and I'm going relatively close to the cornea, I don't, uh, close to the limbus, I don't want to go too far into the cornea and if you notice here I am not going full all the way in because this is a white cataract again unpredictable so you want to go just far enough in to get a cystotome in or a pair of um, long forceps as well so here I'm using 
um, HPMC to coat the surface. HPMC is so crucial in these situations. You want to maximize your view. You want to stop the cornea from becoming uh, dry and um, edematous later on. So you want to keep protection on the surface for as long as possible and keep topping it up. Here I'm just seeing the behavior of the capsule with the vision blue. Um, just trying to make a curve upwards and then I could just decompress um, or take away some of the soft lens matter. So I'm again using a HPMC cannula on a syringe to just pull away or aspirate some of the soft lens matter and just this is also helpful to get a view or get a feel of what the cataract's like whether it's a soft white cataract or if it's a very hard cataract. And here I use a sister term to continue the rexus trying to make it as central as possible and again sizing is crucial you want to make these uh, rexus as too large and again you don't want to make them too small so if you're dealing with optic sizes of around about six five and a half millimeters you want to try and make the rexus around about five millimeters later on down the line if this patient needs a uh, penetrated keratoplasty corneal graft and definitely this patient will need a stem cell transplant um, then you want to make sure the lens that you choose and the position of the lens is optimal. Here I'm completing the rexus with a pair of forceps, trying to make the rexus as even as possible, taking my time. So in these cases you want to take your time. You want to control all of the aspects of the operation that you can control and you want to minimize any risk uh, during this procedure. At the same time you don't want to spend too much time thinking uh, of your next steps. So you'll always while you're doing this think of what, what you need next and what to ask the scrub nurse for. The next step is, um, in terms of hydrodissection, again you want to be extremely careful. I'm, I'm very gentle with hydrodissection um, in patients uh, such as this, especially with white cataracts. I just do gentle um, um, hydrodissection but try at the same time to push the posterior wound down to try and release some of the uh, uh, viscoelastic that's there. And then now you notice once I've done the hydrodissection and I've checked the feel for the lens and checked if it's slightly rotating, I complete the wound and then I start gentle phaco so in this case you uh, want to have the bottle height uh, as you normally would do there's no need to increase the bottle height um, and uh, I tend to just stick with what I'm familiar with I don't want to start doing uh, primary chop or start trying to do chop in, in an eye that might have a difficult view and I always want to top up with HPMC so I just stick with a mushroom um, and just do divide and conquer so you just want to assess and feel the behavior of the cataract um, and see whether it's hard or soft. This seems to be a cataract that's uh, midway there. It's not behaving overly soft, but at the same time it's not excessively hard. The other interesting thing here is that you want to check the behavior of the capsule, the lens within the capsule itself, and see if there's excessive play or movement uh, in the capsule to check for capsular support. Here the lens seems to break up quite nicely and I'm continuing with the divide and conquer technique which I find is a safe fallback technique even though I do use other techniques all the time. Now in terms of breaking the uh, or splitting the lens again you want to use minimal um, movement within the lens capsule um, you want to try and break the lens without putting too much pressure on the capsular bag and furthermore, you want to rotate very gently. You want to be as delicate in the eye as you can be, especially in these cases. So here I'm just splitting the lens, and now I've taken the lens out, and I'm putting the uh, new intraocular lens in. Now I use a hydrophobic lens in these cases, especially with the risk of needing a corneal graft in the future, and I'm very gently inserting the lens. I've missed a little bit of the video out because one of the parts of the video was corrupted so I can't show you the bit where I removed the lens and did some SLM but this case had very little SLM uh, to IA but I was using bimanual to do that uh, and you sometimes get tiny fibers on the periphery of the capsule and you also get um, this kind of uh, capsular remnant that you want to remove very gently if you can so I use a polish mode to remove the capsular remnants on the inside surface of the capsular bag. Yeah, making sure that the position of the lens is adequate, making sure that it's stable within the lens. And before doing the IA, because I'm using bimanual, I make sure the wound is secure. So in these cases, when I'm putting the amniotic membrane on, and these patients have um, other corneal pathology, I always put a, um, a suture in 
and I, I tend to avoid using radical sutures so I use nylon sutures in these cases so here I'm just using my standard 1-1-1-1 technique being careful not to come out through the conjunctival area when I've done the suture I'm just burying the knot and now I'm gonna carefully do um, IA and I'm trying my best to avoid any excessive trauma of movement within the eye there's um, an issue with doing IA um, too gently is that you might leave some viscoelastic within the eye especially behind the lens now this creates problems later on as you might get a distended capsule you may get a myopic shift with anterior prolapse of the lens so it is really important that the viscoelastic is removed as much as possible especially when you're using a combination of uh, dispersive and cohesive and here I'm just um, making sure that all the viscoelastic is out sometimes I just gently press on the periphery of the optic of the lens just to tilt the lens a little bit to allow uh, removal of any trapped viscoelastic behind the lens and you need to be careful here because when you do what in your mind is a perfect rexus at 5 millimeters, there is an overlap around the optic so it is relatively easy for this viscoelastic to get trapped behind without actually actively going behind so here I'm just checking with the um, irrigation taking the aspiration out to see if the wounds are secure I'm doing some very gentle uh, stromal hydration very very gentle especially in these disease corneas you don't want to, do, you don't want to over stromally hydrate especially when you've put a, a suture in already if you find that the AC is still collapsing it may not be a bad idea to suture the paracentesis as well now here you can see that the lens is really nicely visible, the red reflex is uh, really good and the eye looks stable. Now I've moved on to putting the amniotic membrane on and I've already put one layer of amnion on and I've extended this out to the periphery underneath the conjunctiva where the peritomy is. And I'm using a continuous suture to um, hold the amnion in, in place and I've done videos before on my channel about use of amniotic membrane post grafts this is the same principle uh, in in this instance it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a double layer on and it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and suture the conjunctiva in a better position and you can do that uh, with with the tenon or nylon as well and incorporate it into the uh, amnion the main aim here is to try and minimize the level of vascularization that happens ultimately this patient still has stem cell deficiency or failure so you won't be kind of creating a complete um, clear ocular surface but you want to prepare that as much as you can for the next procedure which will be a stem cell transplant if the cornea doesn't look as clear as you expect and there's a lot of stromal scarring then you may want to decide on a corneal graft as well but this video just shows um, the situation faced when you have limited view and what you can do in stem cell failure or deficiency and the steps you could take to uh, avoid further complications or minimize complications doing cataract surgery. Now here I'm just um, doing the antibiotic and the steroid. Uh, you could as well uh, put a bandage contact lens on top which I did do after I took the drape off. So I usually put a large bandage contact lens off once the drape has been removed and the speculum has been removed. Um, so I'm very careful about use of a contact lens with the uh, uh, speculum still in. I usually put it in after I've removed it. So I hope that's been an interesting video. I'll try and be more regular with my video uploads in the coming